Good morning and God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to That Will Be The Christian Church. God's will worship service at 10 a.m. We are grateful and thankful for your presence and for the power of God showing up among us. Uh, in these days that we're living in, I'm so glad for God's presence. And I don't know how you feel, but I believe if you feel how I feel, you're thankful for the more of God, the more of his presence, more of his power, more of his glory, more of his grace, more of his mercy, more of his forgiveness just more of God. And I'm just so grateful and thankful for all of God's goodness and all of his grace and just for another day to be loved by him and to wake up, to bless his name, to praise him and to worship him. We're going to pray and then we're going to get into the word of God. I'm so excited. It's been a wonderful time in this sermon series about Take Back the City and I pray that it has inspired us and encouraged us to get out not only in our community, uh, even in the midst of a pandemic, but even virtually online sharing our faith in one life at a time, seeing the kingdom be, be built up to the glory of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you for this preaching and teaching moment, Father. We pray that you will lead us and guide us in your word, that we may apply it, that we may be obedient to it. Father, we're just grateful for another day to worship you, either in person or even virtually. We're just thankful to call upon your name for the Lord God. You are holy, you are righteous, you are God alone. And we thank you for any and every blessing that you have given us. Father, draw us nearer to you that we may grow closer and go deeper in your word. Forgive us for any of our sin. Remove any and everything that will try to distract us or keep us from your word, God. We know we have power and victory over the enemy. We love you. We bless you. And we honor you, God. May I decrease that you may increase. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Less in me and more of you until so there's none of me and all of you. We worship you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Teaching about salt and light. Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 16. And the word of God reads, I'm reading out the New Living Translation. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket instead a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father in heaven the king james version says that verse 16 like this let your light so shine before men women, boys, and girls, that all may see it and glorify our Father in heaven. The last sermon for this sermon series in the month of January on the 31st of 2021, the Lord wants to speak to us about, preach to us, and teach to us about a city on a hill, a city of lights. A city of lights, a city on a hill. Think about a group of people who may be homeless, who may be without any place to stay and it's really cold out at night and imagine a few of them being able to make a fire just to keep warm and it's the only fire in the area and imagine people as they are walking through just trying to make their way maybe to a shelter or just trying to get to someplace warm they see that fire and they all make their way to that flame even though it's cold they're still able to bundle up and stand next to another brother and sister that cares enough about not only themselves but others to light a fire so that not only they can be warm, but everyone else can be warm too. We live in a cold, cold world. And the reality is this earth is not our home. But the good news is Jesus came to be the light of the world. Jesus came to be that fiery burning fat of passion that showed up in the form of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2 so that we can all huddle up together stand next to each other and as the light is burning we too are burning as well our light is ignited by the light of Christ and so we ought to not only keep that light and keep that fire but we ought to share it so just as we learned in the introduction of this sermon that people from all walks of life that are spiritually homeless, who understand that this earth is just a passing through, can come to the light of Christ so that our hearts can be warm, 
so that we can go out and share that light in a cold and dark world. If we know anything about a city, there's so much going on in the city. There are hospitals in the city, there's schools in the city, there's businesses in the city. The point I'm making is, is that if the church understands its mandate and call to love God and to love people, with all of our mind, with all of our heart and our soul and loving our neighbor, if we will go and teach and baptize all over the world, doing our part, virtually online, being able to impact lives all across this globe, we can be the salt and the light into the world. I call it the flavor of favor, understanding that favor is the grace of God that is on us. Grace meaning the unmerited favor, the favor that God places on us to do things that we cannot do in our own strength. And God has not called us to live tasteless, bland, spiritual lives. But as we are salted in the faith, as we are as we are seasoned, as we go through, as we are strengthened, and we are walking this daily walk, each and every one of us has a responsibility to make sure that we leave a certain part of life better than what it was before we entered into that particular situation. In other words, on our jobs, in our families, in our communities, the type of impact and influence we make will determine if people will see Jesus, hear about Jesus, and know Jesus. And we have to ask ourselves the, the, the question, what type of impact are we really making? Who are we talking about in terms of, on a day-to-day -day basis, about Jesus? Jesus in the text is teaching us, by precept and example, how to be salt and light because he is the light of the world. And then he's called us, not for our light to be hid under a basket, not for us to hide our light, not for us to dim our light, but to shine brighter. And all that we've gone through in the last year, we need the lights of Christians, of men and women, boys and girls who are unashamed of the gospel, to shine their light in every sphere, in every aspect of life. We need the light shined of the kingdom in politics. We need God's light to shine in the school systems. We need God's light to shine in the judicial systems. We need God's light to shine in every aspect of life. And we got to be on point. We have to do our part. We have to use our gifts. We have to seek God and ask him, God, what is our purpose? And when we find out what that purpose is, Get activated. Get immediately a part of what God has called us to do. That's why being a part of a local fellowship is so important. Because God is always speaking a specific word to his people. And even specifically to us. Generally to the church. But individually there is something specific that God is wanting to reveal to you man. To you woman. And even you young boy and young girl for those that may be watching. To understand that we all have a role. We all have a part to play in this life. If our lifestyles don't match up with what we speak and what we preach and teach and what we share, just like in that beginning text in Matthew 5 verses 13, our, li our lives are not as salty and are worthless to be trampled under the feet of men. Our lifestyle much must match up with what we say out of our lips, what we say out of our mouths. There has to be a connection. So we understand that our lifestyle and our lip service have to go together so that our light can shine brighter. But if we're not living as we should, our light doesn't shine as bright. It's going to be dim. And in the midst of a dark world, we cannot afford not to let our light so shine that all may see it and glorify God. So Jesus is telling us in the text. We're the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Listen, Jesus died on the hill so that we can let our light shine on a hill, meaning that that candle, just like if you can imagine a candle sitting up on a stand, it's high and lifted up so that the light can be shown in all of the house. So our light should be shining in our homes. Our light should be shining in our communities, everywhere we go. And yes, there is so much that is going on in the world on today. So much. And there's so much we can get offended by and get irritated and bothered by. But we can't allow those things to distract us from the goal and the focus of still sharing the gospel. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is on the stand so that everyone can see it. And in the same way, let your good deeds so shine that all may see it and glorify God in heaven. That's what God has called us to do. Our good deeds 
It's beyond what we say. So shine before everyone that people may give God the praise. That's the ultimate goal. That everything we say and do brings honor and glory to his name. Not our name. Not my name. Not your name. Not thou will be done, but to his name. So our lifestyles are so important. We have to make sure that the Spirit of God is leading us in all that we say and do. And if we have fallen short, let's repent. Let's go to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Now show me your purpose. Show me your plan for my life. Give me the blueprint. Give me a vision. God, I want to see it. And then, Lord, help me. <laughs> help me by your grace and your mercy, God, that I may be humble and that I may follow your way, your will, and your word down to the letter. The world we're living in needs our gifts. I asked my uh, children and my nephew yesterday, if you had a superpower, how would you impact and influence this world in a powerful and positive way? And I appreciated so much what they shared. They talked about having super speed so they can go all over the world and, and help people at a moment's notice, being able to take care of the elderly, being able to heal everybody that is sick, being able to pray for people that are going through tough times so that they'll feel better. I'm grateful and thankful because just like our children, our nephews, our nieces have a purpose and plan that God has for them, you and I have a purpose and plan for our lives. Jesus desires to use us. He desires to do great things in us, through us, and around us. And the good news is beyond the Avengers and Spider-Man and X-Men and all the other movies we can think about with people with superpowers. Superman, at the end of the day, you and I have been given the greatest existence in the earth outside of this universe, and it's the Holy Spirit. All of us have a super gift, if you will, a talent that God has given us that he may be glorified and that we may serve him with what we have been given. I may not have your gifts, you may not have mine, but that's not the focus. It's using what God has given us that he may get the glory. We don't want to be guilty like in the gospel text when Jesus is sharing a parable about the particular one who was given the talent. And you had two of them who made good on their talent, made good on their gift. And interest was able to be produced from it. But yet there was one who hid it because they weren't confident. They weren't sure how to use their gift. They were procrastinating. They made excuses. At the end of the day, things didn't go well for them in, in the end. The point I'm making is that none of us want to leave this life with any regrets. We want to pour it all out. We want to put it all out on the line. It's been said this way. Let it not be said about us that we've come a long way. I've come a long way in this life only to discover that we've been going in the wrong direction. We've been going the wrong way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. There's a way that seemeth right unto man, but if it's not going in the direction of Jesus, the end of that man is condemnation and death, eternal separation from God. But if you know Jesus, but if you come to Jesus, but if you know that he's the one, the face of the Father, to show us the example on how to get to heaven, you can experience eternal life when this life is over and a purpose-driven life right now. Fuel for the fire so that you can be that light, just like in the introduction of this sermon. As you let your light shine, more and more people will come around to huddle around so that we can get warm together and warm up this cold world and lighten up this dark place. Light up the darkness. A city of lights, a city on a hill. If you don't know the light of Christ, if you don't know the light of the world who is Jesus, I am praying, I am hoping that you will come and know him in right relationship. Jesus said, if you confess with your mouth through the Apostle Paul, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Today is the day for salvation. Don't let this moment pass you by. Jesus is wanting to use us in every aspect of life. We need his spirit to give us wisdom how to navigate these uncharted waters of getting on the other side of this pandemic. We need him so that uh, this nation that we live in 
can truly be great according to his will and his standards and not our own. We need his presence. If you don't know him in the right relationship, won't you come and get to know him for yourself? If you need prayer on today, if you are struggling with any emotional or mental strain, if it's difficult for you to let your light shine, every now and again you find yourself being like Peter, denying him in certain spaces of life because you don't want everybody to know how much you really love Jesus. Our prayer and hope for you on today that you will allow God to empower you by the power of his Holy Spirit so that you may be bold and not be ashamed of even the naysayers, even if they're in your family, to stand for God. You still love them, you still pray for them, but don't allow them to put your fire out. You keep standing. You keep being that light. Come to Jesus and allow him to use you the way he wants to use you. If you desire to join with us, join our fellowship at here at Thou Will Be Done Christian Church, you're standing on good ground. God has blessed us and is continually to bless us here at Thou Will Be Done. And we're grateful and thankful for what God is doing. God is building us up for the ground up. And we would love for you to come and build with us in what God is desiring to do. We thank God for you so much. We thank you for tuning in to this word. We pray that you were encouraged. We pray you were inspired, empowered to come to Jesus and do his will. If you desire to give unto this ministry, you can go to Cash App, dollar sign, that will be done CC. You can also give it to TWBDCC at Venmo, as well as at our P.O. Box, that will be done Christian Church, P.O. Box 8718, Michigan City, Indiana. 46361. We thank God for you so much. We appreciate you for tuning in, for worshiping with us, for fellowship with us. Continue to pray for us that we will go forward and take back the city. We look forward to our next um, sermon series on next month. We're going to be talking about take back the church. We belong to God. This church belongs to God. The God's house belongs to him. It's his house. It's not ours. We're called to be his children. We're called to serve there. But at the end of the day, it's all about him. And so I'm looking forward to the next come up uh, couple of sermon series that are coming up in the month of March. We look to do Take Back the Family. So I'm just so excited about what God is doing among us and the more laborers that are going to come so that we can grow together in Christ. There's nothing else. If you have any other prayer requests uh, that you choose to share, please put them in the comment section. We're going to pray, and I pray you enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and have a great week. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we lift you up, and we give you the glory. We are mindful, Father God, that we need your light in the dark world. We need the warmth of your love in this cold, cold place. But Lord God, the more your light shows up, the more illuminated things can be, the more, more you can eliminate uh, sin uh, and darkness all around us. And God, we can help cold hearts, hard hearts, to become a heart of flesh as we sow that seed and watch your Holy Spirit a breakthrough and break forth in all of our lives. God, we honor you. We ask you to bless the offering and tithe that was given, that it may give you glory, not only in your house, but also outside your house and to the community. We bless you and we love you and we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and let every heart say amen. God bless you and have a great week and continue to walk in God's will for your life.